his back day. Back and maybe if I have time, I would like to sprinkle in a little glutes as well. So we're just getting warmed up back and forth between some lat pull downs. And I really like this row machine, chest supported row machine. So let's get started. Yes, sir. You like that one? Love that one. Love okay, it. Okay, I'll try this. Love the handle. <laughs> Big fan of starting out with a particular exercise right here and his handle too. As you notice here, she's um she's targeting a little bit more of her, her lats right now, the way she's pulling it down the front. Full stretch at the top, controlling it on the way down. And notice how the bar is like roughly like four or five inches away from her face. You really engage your lats really well that way. Yes. Love this machine. Sense. This handle. I like the handle too. We are kind of like well into our off season now, so training feels pretty good. Food is at, at a good good level. You know, now it's just kind of getting into the monotony of bodybuilding. And so it's a lot of the same thing. That's where I think a lot of people can fall off a little bit. Um, so it's really important to always keep those goals in mind. And I try and, like one thing I like to do with my clients is set short-term and long-term goals. So that way, you know, you can have some short-term goals to keep you motivated, but ultimately, you know, working you up to whatever long-term goal that is, so. People get into the sport, they, they'll do their first show, and then they're out. Yeah. yeah. What, what's, the, what's the ratio of like show day, show time, versus like bodybuilding, off-season, doing all the stuff while you're not lean? Like what's the ratio of Show day. That's most of it. Really? Oh yeah, the, the show day is just really the culmination of years of hard work. You can't just, I don't know, I don't know how I'm trying to say this, but. I can't even really hear the question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess what I'm trying to say is a, a lot of people go into a prep and they, you know, they have that, that show date, that, that set goal. And once the show comes and goes, it's like they kind of lose themselves because they don't have anything further to work towards. And ultimately, like we got into this because we love training, we love challenging ourselves, and we love, I, I personally love being able to sculpt my body yeah. however I want. Um, it gives you a lot of power. So if you focus on that, you focus on the journey, you focus on the person you become in the process, you'll become much, much more satisfied with the process in general. If you just focus on the show day and the outcome and the placing, then you know more often than not, you're probably gonna yeah, be uh, work. Out. You're, you're gonna fizzle out, and you're, yeah. and you're gonna be disappointed because not everyone is gonna win every time. So yeah, that's a good point. You can't really put a whole lot of stock on on a placement. So you just yeah. have to fall in love with the process. That's good. That's the long term. Yes. Yeah, it's the long term effect. Like this stuff right here, what we do, training. Anyone that comes to the gym, like, you, you're thinking they're trying to better themselves in many different ways. So this is more of a, a, a you know, longevity. I want to do this when I'm like 72, 75 years old, man. I don't want to stop because all the show's over. So yeah. folks who exercise um, have a tendency to be in um, better health later down the road. So want to continue it. It's an investment. Yep. You have to know when the time to pull back is because and I, I find a lot of competitors have the hardest time with that, with resting, with pulling back. Sometimes less is more. And I know I've been guilty of it. I see people run into the issue of just like running themselves to the ground, doing a, a you know, thinking, oh, if I want to progress my legs, I just got to train legs more. And sometimes that may be the answer, but oftentimes, you know, I see girls that are training legs three, four times a week, and after a while, you know, you notice you're plateauing. Well, maybe it's because your legs just aren't able to recover. So sometimes you have to know when to pull back, when to take deload weeks, when to rest. It's super right. important. It's my first set. So first set, we did a couple warm-up sets. Uh, blood's in there now, so now we're gonna get at it. So let's, uh. Let me see how this feels. I'm gonna drive back. Try to drive back as much as I can with my elbows and chest up high. Oh man, you really feeling your lats. We can drive back to elbows. Ooh. Good. Ooh. Mm, squeeze. Nice. There you go. Mm. Ah. Oh. 
One more. Drop that and go up. So my goal was to get a nice full stretch and really drive back with those elbows. And depending on where you allow this uh, particular piece of equipment land, some people like to bring it here for upper, upper, upper back, and some will bring it a little lower. So I'm like, I'm in that in-between spot. I'm out right here. I can still drive back farther and target my last two. Yep. Drive, drive, yep. Yeah. Yep. Drive. There we go. Yep. Yep. Drive, yep. Good. I've got my fingers right on here where her, her lats are at. It helps her cue and engage a lot better too. Nice. Uh, oh, come on. Let's go. Oh, yep, more. another one. Drive. All right. Yep. Good. Oh. Uh, one more. Yep. Oh, okay. Wow, oh, shit. Nice. Damn. Nice. Feel that. Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, they're burning. Oh, yeah. Yep. Ooh. Driving back is extremely important if you're really trying to target a particular muscle that you that kind of maybe you need to bring up a bit. Like for me, I really want to focus a lot on my lower lats as well too. So that's why I try to drive back as far as I can. And how far you can drive it back is depending on your mobility. And two, also the weight. So I'm not using a super, super heavy weight, but it's enough where I can get enough contraction and where I felt that after that first set, my lats are on fire. Yeah. And then you are, how much weight can I get? Absolutely. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I can put on here more and just kind of heave weight, but that's not, what, that's not what I'm looking for. My goal is to develop the muscles properly. The outcome is better development. Yes. And for me, what, what the cues that have helped me is always thinking about keeping my chest up. So kind of like my posing clients, I tell them, think about like you're a puppet and there's a string attached to your chest and it's holding you up. So I always think about keeping my chest up as I'm driving the elbows back. So a lot of people, they have a tendency as they come down, to kind of cave down. So really make sure you're bringing that chest up. Like I said, think of the string and then drive back. Come on. Squeeze. Four <clears throat> more. Squeeze. And that little one to two second squeeze at the bottom really, really helps me. Um, especially in the past, I, I had a lot of difficulty really engaging my lats. My arms would take over and pull down movements. So if you notice that with any body, body part, really, just slow the movement down, maybe drop the weight a little bit, focus on the squeeze, hold and, hold and squeeze that contraction for a good second or two. And I guarantee you, you'll get way more out of it, way better pump, way more engagement. I agree. That's the way to go. I'm on fire okay. already, man. My lats are on fire. Okay. All right, second one. Yep. Right in there, yep. Yep. There you go. Pull right between my fingertips, yep. Yep. Oh. Yep, chest up. Nice. Oh, come on. There you go. Come on. Wow. Nice. Yeah. One part that a lot of people don't have in their lat, hit the, the higher, you know, your upper lat, and that one little sliver that the Terry is a smaller part of the lat kind of hangs like this. So next time you look at uh, somebody, their back double, male or female, you'll be able to tell who works their lower lats and who doesn't. All right. So, My lats are sore already. I told you, I know. I know. All right. All right. I see you over there, Dad, over there jamming. Oh, I didn't see that your weight you put on top. Okay, uh, great. All right. Gotcha. Let's go for 10. Come on. You got 12. Yeah. One. Two. Three. Come on. Four. Five. All the way back. Six is good. Seven, eight, 
You got 12. Nine. Come on. Ten. Two more. One more. Well, that last one there. So I went up a little bit in weight. I didn't go as much as I normally do as far as the full stretch because my lats are so pumped right now. I'm always kind of conscious to be careful because I don't want to pull anything in my lats. It happened to me um, like, like seven years ago or something like that yeah. where I was pulling too heavy, had a slight pull, pull a little too much. Man, it took me like months to get that right. Yeah. So my pro tip question is, under heavy load, you don't disengage your own. No, you don't. Under heavy load. Even yeah. light load. Really? Yeah, Not yeah. really. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Because even when you're doing like a row movement, you want to squeeze everything back there. Even your traps too. Everything back there, man. Yeah. Yeah, so. it's it's a balance and that's it takes time, repetition, practice, gaining that awareness over time because you do want a good yes. stretch. Yep. But you don't want, like you said, so much that you're disengaging right. the lap. So it, right. it comes with time. I agree. What's that movie, Malibu's Most Wanted? That was a classic. Come on. Yep. Nice. Yep. Nice. There you go. Good. Yep. Yep. Good. Yep. Here you go. Nice. Nice. While we still have energy, some dumbbell rows. Like one arm dumbbell? One arm dumbbell rows. Okay. One arm dumbbell rows. Let's get it. Man, he's tiring. The full stretch of the bottom like that, bring the weight up, it's tough. Full stretch. Oh, we're tough. You're doing dead stop too. Dead stop to tough. Yeah, okay. Being able to drive it back like that too. I'm winded. Woo! Oh. Yeah. Yep. Uh, two more. Uh. Good. Damn. Yeah, take about a two minute rest. Yeah, does it wear you out? Dead stop. So tough. Dead stops like that will wear, will definitely wear you out. Hell yeah. Yeah. Get by Way two, harder. Yeah. Get about a two minute rest. Nice little trick huh? that you can easily do to make your set a bit more intense. So we're doing dead stops where we're completely resting the weight on the ground before we initiate the next rep. And it's tougher. So give it a shot. Make sure I'm trying to arch up a little bit more. I guess it kind of depends on the rack, how close you are to the, which, where you can rest your hand at too, because mm -hmm. the last set I was here, I wanted to be able to get about right here. Really? See if I notice the difference from like full stretch and come up. I don't know if I'll be able to do it with that weight, but we'll try it. Um, let me try 105 and see how that feels. Ooh, okay. All we know is try it, so see what happens. Yeah. So we got. 
So I can go here. I don't know. But I can still keep my full stretch. Wow, there we go. Nice. That's a good range. So I make sure that when you do this, make sure you have enough room for the full stress so it doesn't hit the other dumbbell. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's hard. Yeah, your form is really good on this. Thank you. He does a really good job of using his arm like a hook and really driving all the way back rather than a lot of people have a tendency when they do rows, they just kind of go up and down, up and down. And a lot of times you're just using a lot of arms. So if you see the way he's doing it, he's really, getting that good stretch at the bottom and really driving that elbow all the way back to really engage that lat. Like he almost does it like a sweeping motion. Mm -hmm. My yep. question is someone not in the field, is that how the muscle fibers run? They do, I mean, if you think about it, like there's a reason why people call lats wings, because they really do like wing all the way around. They insert, you know, in the middle, kind of near your spine and then they come all the way around to the outside so it does kind of wrap around your body around your scap so it is kind of a, a rowing motion and you kind of want to like round those fibers out and all the way back rather than just up and down <laughs> Good see if you get that range I up the weight so I might not be able to but I'll try I'll try I will try. Okay. Nice. Nice. Like this, you definitely want to take at least about a two minute break. It's very taxing. <laughs> nice. Oh, it's good. Yep. Drive. Yeah, there you go. It's good. Ooh. Nice. Good stuff. Hard. Yeah, oh yeah, that's our tough. That's why you don't see a lot of people doing this movement. It's, it's tough. They're hard. <laughs> you won't. I doubt you see anybody in here this whole entire week doing that. Yeah. It's, it's tough. Let's do one more. So we're going to try 110 now, so I keep that same type of intensity and keep my form right. We'll see what happens. Good. Good work. Oh yeah. Oh. Okay. Seeing stars. Let's work. Good work. Nice work. Two minute rest. Set. Oh. That's hard. That's really hard. You never feel that type of. You never get winded on, for example, lap pull downs, stuff like that. But you get wind on that. It's, 
it's a heavy, it's a very taxing movement. Yep. Yep. Can't get density off lap pull downs. You get density by dumbbell rows, T bar rows, rack pulls, deadlifts. You can't get density from lap pulls. You gotta focus on the form and execution. So don't just think you can, you know, stack up the lap pull down machine or stack up some, you know, take some big dumbbells and do some heavy rows. If you're not really performing the move, the movement effectively, then that weight really isn't going to mean anything, and you're probably just putting yourself at greater risk of injury. So, much better off just kind of considering yourself like a beginner. Start low, go slow, try and get the most out of the least, and you know, move up from there. Yep. yep. There you go. <laughs> Last one. Lightweight to a giant. Good. Um, one of the questions that we got uh, a few weeks back was about like when you're in prep. Obviously, you know when you're in prep. You know, you're, especially when you're weeks out, you're depleted, you don't have a lot of energy. And that's where in inflammation really begins to really kick in. Um, and there's nothing we can do about that as part of prep, but I will say, um, keep in mind, a lot of inflammation comes from, correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of it's due to um, uh, nutrient starvation can cause that type of inflammation though too. But your calories are really low, your body's under stress, you got cardio, and just keep in mind, when you, when you go into a bodybuilding show, this is normal, how to feel that way. You can try to do things to minimize it, but that's those are the main cause of inflammation, I think. Yeah. yeah, it's a very fine balance. And of course, it's important to have some people in your corner, like a good coach that is able to have a good pulse on, you know, when to pull things back. Because as the athlete in prep, yeah. we all just want to go, go, go. We want to do more. We want to, you know what I mean? You always think when you're in prep, you're like, you're just thinking, what can I do to be better? Yeah. So for most people, they think, oh, I need to do more cardio to get leaner, or I need to add more sets to improve this body part. And a lot of times, like I was saying earlier, sometimes less is more. So sometimes it is a balance, and sometimes you have to pull back a little bit. But that's also like going into the post-show phase. You have to realize you, you got to give your body some time to really recover after a very hard prep. So. You know, we pull back a lot. Oh yeah. Those, those first several weeks coming yep. off of prep, we really pull back our cardio, we pull back our training yep. especially. Because you have to realize all of that is putting stress on the body and stress accumulates. So yep. you want to go into an off season refreshed, recovered. A lot of people call it like a reverse plan. Um, I heard someone call it more of a recovery phase yeah. and I, I think that's a much better idea of how to think of it because you know like I don't know if you've heard a lot of people think like those first four to eight weeks like oh you've got this anabolic window and you're more pr your body's more primed to grow right after a prep no, it's actually really that. not it's really not it's it's that's that is the time that four to eight week time period after a show is where you need to give your body some rest allow it to recover so then at that point you can push forward yes i think so yes oh yeah and it's not uncommon i mean i i know i've gotten sick right after a prep yeah we've had I've clients been, yeah. that get sick right after a prep it's not uncommon because by that point your your immune system is down your body's worn out you just i mean you gotta slow down. Yeah. A lot yeah. of people, if I can give you any advice, sometimes you really have to know when to slow down because 
you know, stress manifests in many different ways. It could be mental stress, it could be physical stress. And if you don't find ways of dealing with it, your body will show it and manifest it in different ways. Yep. So you have to be mindful of it. Absolutely. Yeah.